Hey folks, uh, thanks for joining us for the uh, five big buying mistakes you can avoid when buying an RV. So that, if that's what you're looking for, you are in the right place. I'm Tim Richardson. I'm excited to uh, bring in a guest here in just a few minutes. I uh, can't wait to introduce him. Uh, he'll be joining us in uh, just a second. But uh, while we're waiting and getting ready uh, for folks uh, coming in, go ahead and uh, find the chat area. It's a little icon off to the side there. It says chat, pretty easy to find. and uh, Say hello, uh, maybe tell us uh, what city you're watching from, or if you're snowed in somewhere, let us know. Uh, I was supposed to be in Cleveland um, where I live, uh, but too much snow, so I can't get back there. So I'm hanging out at RV Wholesalers today. And um, uh, so good morning from California, B Passion. Nice to see you, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have Joan and Craig. Hello, hello, Angela, Jack, Cheryl. Uh, yeah, just put in uh, your city. There we go. Uh, we have Dana from Idaho. <laughs> but you have more snow than we have. Um, Joan from Nevada. So um, while we're uh, getting our shout outs, want to introduce our, our, our friend here, uh, Josh. Come on in here, Josh. So uh, this is our guest today. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. We actually uh, get to hang out together. We'll have to scoot over a little bit so we can see you there. Um, let me, uh, yeah, we, should, we don't need headphones. So, uh, yeah. So greetings to Krista up in Lansing, Michigan. And we have Mr. Bailey or Miss Bailey from Windsor, Colorado. Krista, we got Cheryl from Washington, man. We've got you guys are all over the place. Orlando. Now that's what I'm talking about. Karen, tell me you do not have snow in Orlando. Uh, that would be nice to be down there right now, but, uh, America is snowed in. So we're going to get ready to jump in here. Let me uh, introduce our guest. This is Josh Durnell. Hey, guys. Finally, we get to uh, hang out together and do this. Um, Josh is the expert when it comes to RVs. So uh, this guy grew up, uh, his dad uh, and his uncle uh, started one of the largest RV dealer, single RV dealerships in the country. And so he, uh, your whole life you've been around RVs. That's really, so, really all I know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his uh, family owned a campground. That's how it all started, uh, servicing RVs at campgrounds. And, uh, one of their campgrounds uh, you actually lived at. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. for me, it was different. I'll tell you. Uh, so my story, <laughs> the reason I love RVs, you got to see this. So let's uh, let me show you this picture here. So when I was three... I guess almost four, um, my family decided to go on a camping trip. And uh, my dad actually built this RV, a little camp truck topper. <laughs> so this was our first, uh, my first RV experience. And cool. uh, yeah, it was a little crazy, but uh, hand built. And uh, uh, so here's here's our camping trip. I, I dug these photos out at my uh, my mom's house over Christmas and uh, found these things. But so we, we uh, see this big tree across the way here. So uh, we're on our way to Boot Lake up in British Columbia, Canada, long ways away. Tree falls over. So when we get to it, we can't obviously get past. So we're waiting and waiting uh, for the forestry is the only way to cut something that big. So um, while we're waiting for them, we decided to, it got dark. So we build a little campsite. And so we're sleeping outside, all of us, my two brothers and our family, and we're just camping under the stars. And Middle of the night, I still remember this to this day. Like something, I just like, I just remember waking my mom up, like, I want to sleep in the RV. I want to sleep in the RV. And, uh, or truck top or whatever you <laughs> call it. I don't even know what I called it back then. <laughs> but um, I wanted to go inside. So she takes me inside the truck, sleep great the rest of the night. Next morning, my brothers are walking around the little campsite there. And uh, my brother discovers huge bear prints. Hmm. Like, uh, so when I talk about RVs, it's like RVs saved my life. <laughs> so, but anyways, that's my story. But let's let's dive in and let's help these folks today, man. I'm I'm excited. We have uh, Josh. Um, me, I I don't actually. I'm not even on uh, payroll at RV wholesalers. I just love RVs, and they've uh, full disclosure. I mean, they pay me to to help with some marketing stuff. But I um, I love doing webinars. And when they came to me, like the owners, uh, your dad and your uncle. 
Um, they both were just like school teachers um, for 10 years before they got into RVs. And so they just want people to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's our goal today. It's We obviously know we can't sell what, how many RVs uh, were being sold this year? I think there was 500,000 last year. That's just, just, just new. Yeah, so, new yeah. RVs. And I mean, yeah, we, we obviously can't can't sell them all, right? Yeah. But um, there's still a lot of things that we go up against. Um, I mean, every dealer has different tactics, okay? Mm -hmm. And some of those, I mean, so to, to bring my personal experience into this, it, it, it's hard sometimes to sell <clears throat> based on what the guy before me told the customer, which is typically what they want to hear, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there again, I mean, I, I love being a part of these things just because there's there's a lot of things that uh, right now we sold. I mean, I would go as far as saying 75 percent of the people we sold to last year never camped a day in their life. Oh, wow. it was so these are all new, just like our folks here. Probably. Exa yes, exactly. I mean, and, and uh, you know, but what I really like about these two is when you do the um, uh, little the poll chart, the poll, yeah. yes, to see. I mean, again, it kind of tells you, you know, find out who, I'm gonna... who, who, yeah, who, who, who's a first time buyer. I mean, um, there's there's a lot of veterans too that have just simply been doing this for a long time, bought many campers in their life. They've, they've never even heard of some of the things that we go over in these. So uh, again, it's just I mean, when you see the things that you do, it encourages you to want to go out of your way to let people know about it, right? Just so you don't have to get those terrible ex experience, those the, those war stories, right? That's, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's yeah. That's so Josh uh, is a um, what would you? Call yourself here at RV Wholesalers. So Josh is uh, an expert of uh, matching people's camping needs to their whatever trailers. whatever needs done. When when your last name's on the door, you do whatever needs done. But that's 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 what they uh, call my job title. I'm, in, I'm 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 a sales consultant, so I just try to help people get it, uh, their RV narrowed down, whatever's going to work best for them, and. Um, obviously go yeah. over everything that we're, we're about to, you know, make sure yeah. you're getting the best deal. Of course, a lot of, a lot of people come to me, they, they'll already have it narrowed down what they want. They're just looking for, you know, yeah, I mean, but buying an RV is kind of like a relationship. You're looking, awesome. you're looking for the right person to buy it from. You can yeah. get it anywhere. Right? right. But, but what do you offer? What do you bring into the table? What, yeah. what are you going to do for me? How, how are we going to benefit each other? Right. So yeah. um, that, that's kind of how I look at it. I want, I want a friendship. I want a relationship with these, with my customers and I want to make sure we're getting them into the right, the right. Yeah. Uh, and a unit. lot of times, you know, that may not even be us or are we wholesalers? That may be your local person, but uh, yeah. let's of dive course. in and help them so of that course. nobody's yeah. taking advantage here. And, uh, as you uh, have questions throughout our time, uh, just put it in the chat. We'll get to as many questions as we can. Uh, greetings to Michelle out in North Carolina, Jack, snow and eight degrees. Yeah, that stinks. Um, Craig and uh, 80, no snow, 82 degrees. All right, let's just go on. All right, we got to get it. Rub it in. Yeah, <laughs> right. So five big buying mistakes. Number one, not asking for the out-the-door price. Josh, can you... Uh, Say why that's important when you start comparing prices on RVs uh, yeah. as you start narrowing down. Well, let's let's back up because, like you said, a lot of people are new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I started, I didn't even know that. I thought RV just meant motorhome, so I just assumed like an RV is a motorhome. There's a lot of terminology, and, and yeah. I mean, since we sell all over the country, I pick up a lot of <laughs> new names myself for things, right? But oh, yeah, nice. um, yeah, yeah I, I mean, our, our, our RV, recreational vehicle, motorhome, that's the whole category. Whole, in my perspective, it's, it's the whole category. Whatever a recreational vehicle will be, we'll call that an RV, right? Okay. Uh, motorhome, that has its own category, travel trailer, fifth wheel. They, they all kind of um, have their own categories, if you will, but um, they I mean, as far as your, your out the door price, um, you, you, well, you, you had said that you wanted to back up real quick. I yeah, mean, no, as far good. as the yeah, keep going. Um, terminology and everything, yeah, it can be, um, but I mean, a very, very um, repetitive mistake that I see with a lot of people. Um, now is harder than ever. We do have some players in the space that they want to offer or try to match the prices that, that we offer, right? No no harm. I mean, that was the goal of, right. of getting our, our profit margins to where they are is we see people making almost $20,000 on a like single sale. Like a single, that's how it used to be in the day. Yeah. Uh, so literally, and, and these are not exaggerated numbers. They're, there's, there were huge profit margins back in the day. We were one of the first to get it down to the single digit. And then we saw like, wow, we're selling at a, at a much higher pace now, much, much more volume. 
that's making us just as much profit as it would to sell those five. Cam- I mean, selling those 50 campers made us just as much as selling the five, but those 50 people tell way more people about us than those five. And you, you see, it, it's just kind of one of those things dawned on us. And now we see people doing that as well. One of the things that um, has hurt this or, or, or uh, uh, affected us would be what the manufacturer suggests that we can sell it for. Everyone knows what the MSRP is, right? So, so that's that's the yeah. their, their suggested retail price, what we should be selling it for. Honestly, I could sell the trailer for a dollar if I wanted to. I mean, once I pay for it, it's mine to do with what I want. We've we've you know given them away. We've but again, I could literally sell it for a dollar. They wouldn't mind, but I cannot advertise it for oh, a dollar. Right. So right? map pricing map or pr- minimal minimum. advertised pricing to yeah. to keep everything okay. fair across the board, right? So and and we'll get into a couple fees um, that you'll see more of the further away you get from the factory. I think that's kind of important to to know what to expect and know what these fees are. Um, but map pricing, the manufacturers force us to advertise at a certain price point. So when I'm posting on Facebook and Craigslist, I literally have other dealerships. They see my posting and they, they'll they see that it's below the minimal advertised price. Then they will report me. So um, it's just it's just this big whole uh, ordeal. Right. So we, we we've come up with an action that is a loophole of their rules right so now you do a quote request a lot of people i mean this is this is not new right i mean i mean this is this is something that people have been doing for years we've had to do it for years a lot of people are thrown off by this because you know hey you don't advertise your prices we literally can't we're selling them so much cheaper than what they tell us to they won't let us advertise them is it really is what it is but that's that's why you submit a quote where i'm getting at with this is is you can do the same quote on three different dealers websites on the same RV and you're going to get different prices. One of those obviously is going to be the lowest you'll find. The other one's going to be the highest, right? Well, there's, I mean, that's, that's typically what people will rely on to, to make their decision. Okay. This, this guy had the lowest price. That's who I'm going to at least call first or hear yeah. out, you know, but that, that person, and, and again, uh, we'll get into the Southern States a little bit here in a second, just so you can understand where I'm getting at with this. But You'll, you'll notice that the guy in Texas, <clears throat> his quote, that was the same price as what mine is in Ohio. Um, and again, it's a very important for everybody to know that, I mean, all of these RVs are manufactured in Indiana. So by the time that the guy gets his to Texas, he has to pay about $3,000 more than I do to get it up to his lot, right? Uh, the thing about that is, is it's, he's not going to tell you about that because then you're not going to be interested. Why, why would you call the guy in Texas if you're in, let's say, Kentucky or, or Oklahoma, right? I mean, that's a good middle point. Why would you call the guy in Texas if, if he's automatically three thousand dollars higher? You're not going to. So that that takes him complete. That takes all the food off his plate right then and there. So what I'm seeing happen is these dealers are getting smarter. They're using an advertised price to bring you in to get um, <clears throat> your interest there, and then they hit you with these these fees, right? Um, a couple of them I'll name off, and then we'll really dive into them. Yeah. Um, prep fee. Freight fee, uh, prep fee. That's that's to get everything done to the RV that that's necessary. So that's to um, you know again to to go through a new unit and inspect everything, to run the water, the propane, to clean it, to do all those things. Um, I'll, I'll get why you shouldn't be paying for prep fee in, in a moment, um, but you'll see a freight fee. Freight fee is is the cost of getting it from the manufacturer to that dealer's lot. Some dealerships they choose to put that in the price of the RV, the one that you'll get the quote on. Others uh, will simply just have that as a fee, right? So, uh, and again, there, there's many, many more dock and title, environmental coatings, tire fees. I mean, you name it. Uh, uh, yeah, just so you don't, uh, we don't scare you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a download right now. So look on um, on your screen here and you should see this popping up. It's a, a place you can download this one page PDF. It's free, obviously. And we have all those fees right now. So, yeah. so yeah. you don't have to be like, good. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. so you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Not, not necessary to take a whole bunch of cool. notes. Yeah, keep I'm talking a, about I'm a fast that. talker anyway. So yeah, just, yeah, uh, guys, just download that. That'll be really helpful. Thanks, Tim. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, that's, that's kind of the, the whole goal of this is to understand, I mean, the difference, in my opinion, between an advertised price and an out the door price. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that, you know, the first question you just asked, that's the first mistake we see is not asking for the out the door price. And again, that's a, there, there's a lot of surprises once you get to that dealership travel in some cases, thousands of miles to get there and then be 
informed that, wow, I owe you an extra $6,000. When was that discussed? Why, why didn't I hear about it? Right. So, um, and again, we see that way more. Well, yeah, I just shoot. was uh, shooting video a week ago or so. And Todd, uh, this couple, they were buying a, a Rockwood travel trailer mm -hmm. to, um, so they didn't have to stay in hotels uh, when they were going to these craft shows that they do. And so they're, um, but they, they went on to tell me, and I think you might even know this couple, but they went in on, like, right on the video that he's like, well, we were at this uh, place in Richmond, and uh, they wanted $1,200 for a walkthrough fee, and yep. so we just, we're like, this isn't right. And then on video, he's like, but we saved $9,000 here. Like, I, I was shocked. You know, I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, well, and, you, see all, you hear all these stories all the yeah. time, but, um, yeah. but yeah, and, it's and, that fee that. Exactly. Well, and I'm sure there was, there's many more. I mean, because if he did go there and give them the chance, they were obviously a better advertised price. There's no way right. that you didn't know about me first. Right. So you at least did a quote with me and them, but they're probably, and I, and I, I know exactly who you're talking about the dealership. Uh, oh, okay. I, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. That's exactly why I'm here in front of you guys today, all 61 of you that are joining up. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm here personally is I, I mean, I see too much of this, that, that guy, I guarantee you, he was told that his out the door price was much lower than what mine would be. We're, we're, we're trained here to give you, like you're going to know before we get off our first phone conversation, what my two fees are, what your sales tax is, what delivery is. Yeah. That's, that's good that's, because that's wait, that's, that's a surprise. It's not a hidden fee at that point. You're no, telling them no. upfront, okay, there's a, what? A dock and title fee, which yep. the state requires. We, we, uh, we have a dock and title. So uh, when, which, when, tell when, them what that is. When, when you sell a new RV, uh, I mean, used as well involves paperwork and everything. But when you sell a new RV, uh, you know, more importantly, you have a factory MSO that has to be transverted or uh, transferred or converted to a title. And then that has to be flipped into your name and your state. So that's a 295 dock and title. And then we have a $360 factory freight. Okay. Um, so, and that's just to get it from Indiana to our location. But again, that's, that's one thing that I never let a customer off the phone without knowing, because when he does go to compare my prices to everyone else, I want him to know, <clears throat> here's the options that is on your RV. And also mm -hmm. here's everything that, and, and I, and then I'll tell them, here's the questions I want you to ask your local dealer. What is this fee? 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 And then last, how are you going to take care of me once I get this thing back home? That we may not have time for that segment here. Yeah, actually, we need to. Jeff, uh, he put in that he wants to know, like, uh, is it better sometimes buy out of state for better pricing, or does that mean hassles with maintenance warranty down the line? So awesome. Let's not talk about that yet, but awesome. definitely, yeah. uh, Jeff. By the time we get through the end, definitely it's like point five uh, about service. So, yep. but it's one of the most important. So, yeah, I'm no, glad you that's asked that. Right, so. That's yes, uh, we definitely will have to get back to that question. Um, oh, was so, uh, but yeah, you were talking about uh, one of the fees being transportation three hundred. What do you say for you in Ohio mm -hmm. since you're so close to the factory? So factories, uh, I, I probably made five trips in the last two months to all the different, a bunch of different factories, gone in with video cameras because I was concerned about, you know, it's quality up, you know, like they're cranking out so many. And I, I was impressed. Like yeah. they were actually putting out, um, I think they're doing better quality because they're focused on one model longer. So they have longer runs. And that's not a bad point to so, make, actually. Yeah. I mean, now now that they're doing twice as many of the Right. Because before they were changing like half a day, they would do one model and change it up a little bit. You know, and so that's actually a really so, good point. I, um, I mean, I, I know my guys are finding more trim, like, like fit and finish stuff. Like, you know, the, the guy is not going to take. An, an extra 20 minutes to take the board off and go cut an inch off and put it back on. That's it's, it's us that catch that stuff. It's, it's, it's little things, but I'm saying, so what do you call? So that was one of the fees though. What well, do you call that when you check it out that, that, after you get it? That'll be the prep. And and I think that would be a good place to start as far, because again, uh, Jeff, you're, you're asking all the right questions, my friend. I really want to focus on a couple things that you're asking. Um, I mean, so how do you know what additional fees uh, that get tacked on are legitimate and what's a scam. And that's exactly like, so yeah, stay tuned. That's exactly what we're going over. Um, and we're going to dive right in. So prep. Okay. When you see a prep fee on a dealer's note, whether it's $395, which is the cheapest I've ever seen, or if it's $2,950, which is the most expensive I've ever seen, do not pay that fee. Fight, fight, fight them until they take it off. It might be called PDI, which stands for pre-delivery inspection. Pre-delivery inspection. Prep, yeah. uh, Pre -prep, yeah. prep fee is what I see most of. Um, it, it, it's the that. same thing, though, guys. It, this is this is the process that when a dealership takes in a new RV, 
um, or, or used. Uh, now, now used, that's that's just, I'll, I'll just get that right out here. If it's a used RV, they're most likely going to charge you for it regardless, but you are going to be asked for it. That's that's at least, you you deserve to be asked mm -hmm. if you so want your it decision. to be gone through. It okay. should be. A lot of dealers try to still put that on there because it's liability. Um, it should still be your decision. So at least know, hey, if I'm buying a used RV from this dealership, uh, if they are going to prep it, make sure everything works and all that stuff, um, just ask them what the fee is before because you might yeah, get into it. And they, I mean, it could be thousands of dollars because they found all these things wrong. Well, you told me to do it, so I did it. <laughs> well, we didn't discuss $3,000. 300 maybe that would, that would be reasonable because they're yeah. going to spend about three hours of time on it to, to test the water, test the propane, things like that. Um, but well, yes, the sure. problem is a lot of these fees... You go ahead, you put your deposit down, you order it, you pick it out, da, 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 you wait for a couple months for it to be built, whatever it is. And then you arrive, your kids are there, they're excited, they, mm -hmm. they're ready to go figure out who's on the top bunk. And, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're sitting at the, what, it's like a closing room or yeah. a closing desk, the F&I room or whatever they call it at this dealership. But, and that's when... Uh, that's when a lot of surprises happen. Yeah. And that's when you don't want the surprises to happen. That's when uh, that's they kind of make you feel guilty surprise. sometimes. Yes, of course. Like, oh, what, how would they say? It's like, so like, again, like, like with the prep fee, focusing on that, the, the reason before I answer your question, the reason that you should not be paying or why that is a uh, legit or an illegitimate fee in my opinion because just like what i told you when i find that piece of trim that is three inches too long and it's bowing out instead of being uh properly connected to the wall they the manufacturer pays my guys uh handsomely mind you to fix these things that they failed to do properly so even if i i mean if i have to if i have a leak on a brand new camper because something rattled loose or something and i have to drop the underbelly in the tank and then i find oh there's my issue and i fix it uh, all of a sudden I have three hours of work in this again, guess who oh. pays me? The, the, the manufacturer does. We submit those claims via warranty and they pay me a lot, a, a good amount of money to fix these things so that you as a customer don't have to worry about that. Now, um, it's kind of that last step, you know, after it travels across the road one yeah. time, it's first maiden voyage. It, it's like the it's first like test it all out exactly. one more time. I know. I mean, exactly. it's a serious test. It's a good test. I mean, I've watched your guys, yeah. um, uh, water's been raining down my head and I look up in there with a hose going over the, all the yep. vents and AC units, make sure there's no leaks around seals and stuff. I mean, it's you, great to have, you just, but. you never know what they missed or, or what they weren't thinking about. But, I mean, you got to think about all of the things that they're doing. They, they'll build one RV in less than three days. That's, that's crazy to, again, to even uh, grasp that concept is there, there's got to be something. I mean, they're made with human hands, right? That's why. So it's just, it's very important to just go through, make sure everything's good. That's, that's the PDI process. Again, the reason that you should not pay for it as a customer is because the manufacturer pays me to fix anything that I find wrong. So if I am charging you, uh, whether it be $395 or 2,950, if it was a big motor home, right? I mean, the, the, the larger and more bells and whistles you have, the more expensive this fee is, is what we see. It, it shouldn't be paid, guys, because, again, if they find anything wrong with it, the manufacturer pays them a lot of money, okay? Uh, again, used vehicles, all I'm saying is make sure that you have the opportunity to know what that fee will be and what all they plan on checking. You know, is it a 90-point inspection? Is it 160? I mean, there, there's a lot of different um, things as far as the, the depth of how they will go. But so to get back to your question, though. Yeah, so you're sitting is, in the closing room. When, th this is one of those things that they will wait to toss on you in the closing room because then you're at their mercy. I had a customer one time. Uh, she was a widowed uh, elderly lady from Colorado. She was going back and forth between me and a guy from Texas on a motorhome. Uh, they were beating my price by about, I think it was all said and done at about $2,600. I try, I tried to reason with her. I said, ma'am, that's it. It would, it would actually be impossible for a dealership in Texas to sell you the exact same trailer that I am with the exact same options, but in Texas for less than what I could because they have to drive it down there. So not only is right. it going to have 2,000 more miles, so it's not even new at that point, but they they still have to make money. They, they're not just, you know what I mean? So, I mean, if it was an older model, sure, I'd get it. But anyway, sorry, don't mean to drag that out. She ended up going with them, and she called me crying, literally. She says that when she got there, the trailer was almost $8,000 more. What? All these things that they added onto there. And she's literally, she's in her 70s. She has, she, it's her and her little dog. Do you really think that she's going to drive <laughs> to Ohio from Texas? She just traveled from Colorado to Texas. Do you really think she's going to drive to Ohio? 
No. no. That was it. They had her. They, she was at the mercy of these guys, right? Plus, she waited for the order to she, get there. I mean, it's, yep. it's not like uh, it, start it, over. It, yeah, exactly. Um, You're not going to start over. These dealerships know that. And that's why I, we're seeing a lot more of the deceitfulness, I guess, with mm -hmm. a lot of places. As far as, I, I mean, you, they know that you just waited three or four months to get your RV. Are you really going to start this process elsewhere? No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a very tough person um, to be able to walk out of that closing room once they hit you with this stuff. You really do. But um, to know about it beforehand, I think, is much more yeah. important. You know, because then you don't have to waste any of that time. Then you don't have to be at the mercy. But they, the, yeah, the don't be afraid to ask mm -hmm. these tough questions and ask for it in writing too. I mean, yes, like you, you should always put it as part of the sales agreement. Like I want to see all the way down to the tax, every yep. detail that's going to cost. So I know what that bottom number is. So. Yeah, it'll, it should always be in writing. Uh, even even things that the salesperson's promising you um, oh, as yeah, far as okay, deadlines, fine. anything like that. I see it way too much, guys. So we're just, again, that's that's the point here. But um, ultimately, though, that's when, when you're in, in their, their finance room face to face and they say, uh, you know, hey, Mr. M you know, Mr. or Mrs. Finance person, what is what is this fee here? You're charging me twelve hundred dollars to prep my trailer. What 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 is that? I wasn't told about this. What 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 what, what is this? And they'll look at you kind of like you're you're stupid. You know, they'll say, "What? Well, I mean, do you do you want the trailer to leak when you get home? I mean, do you do you want to have issues when you get at home? I mean, we have to we have to test, we have to inspect things. I mean, they're going to try to put it on you. And again, I. We, you I, seem pretty good at that. Have I you been doing that? I see that. <laughs> I see it way too much. I just don't. No, I don't it's agree. It's, uh, some some people, uh, Tim, they travel to us. I mean, as far as Oregon, Alaska. Wow. If they were to travel, because I, I know I'm not the only one selling in those states. Being in Ohio, I know I, I could name you two other guys that do the same thing, have the same opportunities. That I could also tell you all the fees that they have that we don't. There should be no surprises if you're going to drive. You know, a total of what uh, eight, to maybe 10, 10 days to get back and forth just to pick up a motorhome. I'm sure you're saving thirty thousand dollars compared to your local guy, but it's still like there shouldn't be any surprises. But um, I, uh, well, here I want to read these emails real, or these uh, comments real quick. Yeah, she was just kind of confirming like, well, sometimes you just got to walk. Well, yes, of course. Um, uh, there's, there's. Yes, literally. I, I mean, the 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 most that I will not do is is just and this is just as a salesman, because a lot of people, um, they I mean, they don't really have an intention to to drive to Ohio. They want they just want my price. They want their local dealer to match or to match it. Right. So I'll, I, I don't like to make it easy on everybody, but I'll, I'll take a snippet of the purchase agreement. And it just won't have my name on it. And, and I was like, here's the numbers, right? Take them to whoever you want. I know no one's going to beat it, but but you can take that to whoever you want. Even if they do, just remember of all the things that, that we offer that they, they might not, you know. But ultimately, um, you should still get something in writing. I'll, I'll just, I'll tell all my customers, listen, if, if the number that you're uh, out the door does not match this one I'm sending you to an email, then, then I don't expect you to buy from me. But I know it will. We, we're not going to change these numbers around. I just don't want to make it easy for that that local dealer that was trying to rip you off in the first place to earn your business, right? But um, but again, ultimately, yeah. Check out. Uh, Ruth just said the prep should be part of the sale, correct? I, it, it should. Yes, but it, it's just it's just most important to know, Ruth, that you should not be paying for that. That's all. That's all I'm trying to get across here is do not pay for the for a dealership to prep your RV. It's it's unnecessary. The manufacturer pays them very well to go through this RV. You should not have to. And matter in fact, I could name you. Or I'll, I'll go as far as saying 80 percent of the dealerships that I've I've encountered that do charge you for that. They don't even go through it. Because guess what? You just paid them the money. Why would they waste their time? They're just going to clean it up really, really nice. Everything's going to be spick and span looking, smell brand new. They're not even going to run the water or the propane. And then when you get home and it rains and you have a leak in your window, you're going to be very upset. And that's why, I, again, I can I can see a lot of these reviews happening, a lot of these experiences happening. Yeah, because you're on a lot of the discussion boards. And, uh, so you probably every, see every, kind of every, every single one. Oh, yeah, gosh. I try to try to keep up as much as I can or, or help out. But um, there's, a, there, again, you hear a lot of um, really crazy things, you know? <laughs> Let's go see how many uh, people, this is their first time buying RVs because a couple of people asked about questions. So it's about 70% said, uh, yes, this will be our first time. So congratulations <laughs> on uh, doing the homework. I'm, yeah. I'm proud of you guys for uh, taking time, uh, taking an hour today to uh, learn all these ins and outs and inside secrets and all that kind of stuff that um, we want to share with you. So 30% uh, this 
may be their second RV. They may, let's talk about used because um, we're getting some questions about that. Um, what I know what I went camping in around Halloween time. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Took our family. I actually took two RVs from you guys uh, up to a campground. Um, and one of them was a brand new Wildwood. And I pulled it in. And it was a lot easier than I expected being able to do all the backing and stuff like so camping, uh, that was my first time uh, taking travel trailers. Mm -hmm. uh, had done a class C and stuff, but uh, so it was a lot easier than I expected. And everyone was so supportive. And um, campers, uh, are yeah, it was awesome. Some of the best. One of the guys brought over a, a propane tank because uh, I didn't fill mine. Because <laughs> I, I just grabbed one that hadn't been PDI or mm -hmm. anything. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, so he he helped out. And then when he's over there, his name's Chris. Uh, he's like looking at this trailer. He's like, man, this is nice. This is just like art, same layout, pretty much. Uh, fits the same amount of kids and, <laughs> and all that. And uh, uh, so he, he asked me, he's like, oh, how much for the new one? Uh, I didn't want to tell him because he had just told me that he had paid 16000 for his used. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, four years old at the time. And this was three years ago. He's had about three years, but so about seven years old, but he paid seven years ago he paid he said um he paid sixteen thousand and when i told him the price this new one was fifteen thousand five hundred mm. i felt really bad for him because you know he was loving the, all the bells and whistles mm. and the bluetooth speakers and you know like all the all the cool yeah. advances over the last seven years but um but yeah that's i mean that's the thing today i think with used prices it's crazy i mean right so. right now especially um <laughs> Of we, 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 you know, uh, whenever someone asks if we do trade ins, I always like to, which actually that might be a good thing to talk about real quick. Yeah, let's that, go ahead. Because I, I mean, this, um, is, this is something, I mean, for anybody that does have a used, I know uh, only a small, yeah, small let's help them out. That's percentage of you might, but um, I mean, even in the future, this is some. This is crazy, Tim, and it's not something that I've talked about on a webinar yet. But um, you, you bring up a good point as far as the trade ins, and uh, I mean, right now, if I get asked if we uh, take trades, I'll just say we entertain them, right? Uh, I oh, mean, that's good. first and foremost, when when I get a call and and a guy from Florida just bought a 2021 and it's too small for him, um, I'm afraid to even give him an offer because. It, well, it, it, that's if he bought it down down there where he is. But, so I'm afraid to even give him an offer because honestly, all I could do is insult the gentleman because I know I I probably could have saved him at, at, at no no less than eight thousand dollars on average of of a small one or even a, a larger fifth wheel. I could have saved you about ten grand. Put it that way. So that's ten grand. I'm not going to be able to give to you, right? Oh, right? I mean, so it's it's it's. I, I don't want to insult you, and I'm very open about that. I I always recommend that you sell it outright. Um, I actually have a customer in Colorado. He buys a trailer from me every sixteen to eighteen months. Okay, so he'll he'll drive he'll he'll come out here. He'll place an order on the on the new one. He'll he'll kind of you know see what he's looking at. He'll he'll place an order. He'll come out here. And he never does a trade in. I'm gonna tell you why. Because in Colorado, where the prices are about ten thousand dollars more than what they are in Ohio, that guy is able to use his trailer for an entire year, put it put it in his barn for winter, pull it out the next season, use it for that summer, and then he trades it in in the fall. Or I'm sorry, doesn't trade. He sells it on his own uh, and okay. comes back and buys a new one. Okay. All of that money that he did not or could have not gotten for a trade in out in Ohio, he can put in his pocket being in Colorado, right? He literally gets two seasons out of his camper, a year and a half, and he almost breaks even every single time. He's never told me that he's made money, but to use an RV for two years and be able to not have negative equity. Incredible. So I mean, he uh, could he could rent it out if he wanted to. Well, he actually true. didn't want to. That too, yeah. Well, and that's that's becoming a lot more popular. Oh, so yeah. actually, well, I saw um, one guy was doing it with uh, motorhomes. Mm -hmm. Like he would use it as a tax write off. So he, you know, there's that well, thing where you can get a uh, six thousand pound yeah. plus vehicle. So you take a class C yeah. or B or you know, like any of those. And uh, so he did that at the end of the year. And then he'd have that thing. He would just rent it out. He didn't even use it yeah. maybe a couple of weeks for himself, but he just rent it out. And he made, he had that thing paid off uh, in like a year and a half. That's great. And then he would get a new one. Yeah, Everything like, else. Just yeah. Prop, yeah. Our uh, IT director, Phil, I mean, that's exactly oh, yeah. what he does. He's, yeah. he's down in the Carolinas somewhere. He literally has a camper that I don't think he's ever used, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's making money right now. Yeah. But, but, but anyway, um, anyway, yeah, yeah. trade it. So, I mean, that's, 
I'm telling everybody right now, you're best to sell it on your own. I mean, I, I offered a guy like $8,000 for a, a 2010 fifth wheel. I mean, it, and it, that's what it booked for, which I thought was a fair offer. He turns around, he sells it for sixteen nine the next week. <laughs> I mean, so I, uh, it's it's so crazy right now. With And, and just like with what your story was, it, you may as well buy a new one at, at this point. Um, I, 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 I kind of rode the wave last year and I sold my boat. Um, I, I made a very large chunk of change for one. And I was able to put 80 hours on it. Well, this year for what I was looking at last year that I could get for a certain price point, let's just say it's about $20,000 more for the same boat just because of supply and demand. That's, that's what RVs are doing right now. So uh, it's, it's just, it's crazy um, for anyone that's looking, obviously. I mean, I know a lot of people don't want to wait for, you know, springtime and to get their RV. Like I really do understand that. But what I'm seeing right now, as far as how much used trailers are going is scary. And I would much rather have a warranty and, uh, you know, all of the other good things, you know, not inheriting someone else's issues per se. Um, but anyway, trade-ins just to kind of nip or wrap that up real quick. When you go to do a trade-in, always, always, always make sure that you get the prices of the new RV first. Okay. The reason that I say that is because if, if you are talking to a certain salesperson and they do treat you or treat their customers within this way, what they're going to do is they'll say, um, okay, what, you know, what are you looking to get out of it? Well, I don't know, whatever you're willing to offer. Okay, sure. Well, they're going to just say, I could do, um, let's just say that you want 50 and he's going to say, I'll offer you 40,000, right? Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll go back to the boss. I'll see what I can do. Well, now all of a sudden their offer on your trailer is 48.5, which is the, is the best I can do, 48.5. The next thing you know, added on to the new trailer's price is $8,500. And I'm not joking you. I've seen this before. They literally will add it, whatever. So they're they're giving you the money, but they're just taking it right back from right. you. That's, I, it's it's a game. Huh? It's a, it's a, but that right there, though, is like... I mean, that, that should be illegal. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you, but, um, but yes, with that. So, uh, anyone that's, that's, you know, again, going to go, go into, uh, their, their new purchase that does have a trade in, just make sure you, again, get, get everything that you need to know on the new RV first, then bring up the trade, start talking those numbers. You, you may not agree with the trade in numbers. That's, that's fine. That's an adult conversation that you can have together, but, um, just, just so they don't have any chance of doing anything, um, in my opinion, that is a shady business practice. Just uh, do it in those those following steps. That's all I'll say. So, um, uh, just so you know, uh, we're gonna we're recording this so that we can send you an email in about two hours. We'll send it out to you with a reply link, so you don't have to. You can go back through it and listen to it, or you can go to um, RV Wholesalers on YouTube. Just type in RV Wholesalers on YouTube. We'll send you a link here in a second, uh, and we can. Um, subscribe and there's all kinds of videos like this um, where you learn a lot of a lot of things and uh, yeah. everything from how to winterize it which a little late now <laughs> if you can do that but, yeah. <laughs> but anyways um, I want to give uh, you you were starting to talk about um, probably just best selling it outright right mm -hmm. so give them a couple of tips on how to do that and then we'll move on to uh, financing them we got some really cool stuff and I mean this is gonna blow your mind He's got a secret that I'm going to make him tell you because he told me about this and uh, it's going to definitely help you save money uh, in other, in many areas. So, so um, as far as selling it outright guys, um, now I do understand that a lot of people um, may be COVID fearful. I mean, I, I do. I, I also understand that um, a lot of people uh, probably still owe on their RV, right? Those are those are the two biggest things right now that I'm hearing is, um, I mean, how do you go about, you know, tr the transaction of uh, thousands of dollars when you owe on the RV, right? First and foremost, I, I, it is so easy. Just just clean the RV up, take some photos of it. Um, Facebook groups, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, anything um, of a, you know, fr a, a free advertisement, uh, service. If it, you know, if you will, not going to cost you anything. Uh, RV trader, I believe would be an excellent place for that as well. What do you say? Facebook marketplace and RV trader, Facebook marketplace, RV trader. Um, and I'm, I'm on like all those forums I'm talking about. All I just put your email. Stuff. <laughs> Is that right? Jay yeah. Yep. At RV wholesalers. Yep. Um, do you mind if they reach out to you direct Please. and say, Hey, can you help me figure out the price yes. that my, my, uh, used units worth? I mean, cause you have, 
Josh has access to these huge NADA books and uh, you can go to NADA.com. It may not be exactly um, uh, the same information the dealers have. So um, if you just shoot an email to Josh though, he can hook you up with um, helping you figure out what to list that thing for. Yeah, that'd be uh, great. Get the most for it. But um, I, I mean, just, just like that guy with the, with the used fifth wheel, he literally got twice the money I was going to offer him. I mean, I, I, I would have probably put it up for about 10, five, you yeah. know, have, you know, make a, make a little uh, margin there, but got 69 out of it. Like that's, and people will drive like job. hours. Yeah. So don't just list it in your town too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I will. And I mean, that's the thing. People are willing to drive for the deal. That's, I mean, we literally, I think we have two people here from Florida today. Another guy from Massachusetts <laughs> picking up there. Uh, people drive for the deals. That's the same thing with use. But again, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, meeting at the banks, obviously to, for the transaction that should be done there. Um, pictures, uh, you know, the best, better pictures you have, the more pictures you have of it, the less questions that you're going to get, the more people you're going to show up to, um, you know, not kick tires per se. Um, I, and I mean, just hold strong right now. The market is so crazy and upside down that it's, it's a seller's market is, is the truest way I could, I could describe it, but, um, take advantage of it, get out of, of the whole, the negative equity, or don't put yourself in that situation just to get an RV sooner, whatever that might look like. But, um, but yes, please reach out to me. I will happily find your help your phone number. Um, I'll put your phone number yeah. up here too. We'll do yeah. eight, seven, seven. Eight seven seven again. Eight seven seven four nine four 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 nine four, and then extension your extension one thousand one zero zero zero. Okay. You got so that's Josh. Oh, can you even see that? <laughs> that's not good. Oh, line. oh, shoot! All right, I'll put it down here. Eight seven seven. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Anyway, <clears throat> can you type it in there? Four, four, nine, four. Okay. Try that again. Extension mm. 1000. All right. No, <laughs> Sorry for my uh, handwriting. <laughs> Josh, every time you move, I'm worried because it looks like a tree is about right. A pine tree is about ready to fall over. <laughs> Thank goodness that's not a real backdrop. <laughs> I wish it was. We were out. I'm getting a little warm. Spring, yeah, camping. Um, cold weather, <laughs> uh, nice. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about financing. Um, yeah, Craig, uh, I wish I knew this stuff before I bought the other two, Craig says. <laughs> it's, well, it's, at least you're here now. So yeah, I mean, um, you, you can only, help. only learn from, from the mistakes yeah. and from those lessons. And hopefully you've not had an experience that we're describing. I, or, you know, at least I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But that's, again, um, why I, I take my time out to do this stuff. I, I just I see too much of it. Um, I really wish dealerships did not, you know, operate like that most times, but it is what it is. We just want to inform you that way you can go beat them up and not, uh, not have those experiences. Right. <laughs> yeah. Number three, let's dig into it. Yep. Not understanding terms on RV financing. Yep. So, I mean, this is a big deal. Uh, and, uh, I want you to uh, talk a little bit about that and then we'll get to the big secret that, uh, can't wait for you to share, but, uh, so, and, and I, oh, I guess I might more or less spoil that in my, in my present fine, fine. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just put yeah, the slide so, up when it's time. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess to know, um, I mean, how to understand it, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, let's, let's, so here, let me put the slide up. Sure. Not knowing the big dealer financing here. Okay, yeah. now you can tell your story. <laughs> so um, we get paid a lot of money when you finance with us. A ton From of money. Who? The banks. A lot of money. Okay. So for anybody that doesn't know, and I'll, I'll just, I'll explain this in the simplest terms I can. Whenever you as a customer and when you're buying a car, motorcycle, RV, airplane, submarine, doesn't, doesn't matter what yeah. you're into. I, so, I, well, I just ran into this with my submarine. <laughs> so, yeah, so, well, uh, you should have paid attention. Before <laughs> so anyway, whatever, whenever you're buying a large retail purchase, right? When you finance with that dealership, they they are doing the bank's job. They're writing the loans. They're interacting with the customer. They're setting up the terms. They're going back and forth. They do the bank's job for them. So what does the bank do? They say, hey, 
I'm going to use myself in this example. I say, hey, RV wholesalers, here's a check. This is what you, uh, your commission is going to be, right? It's a big check. It's not, it's not, like it feels good in your hand. Like a few hundred bucks? Uh, a couple thousand. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, let's say, let's say a thousand for every 10,000 that you Seriously? borrow. Seriously. So Whoa. if you, if you borrowed a hundred thousand dollars, I'm getting a check for 10,000 bucks. Just here you go. No strings attached. Do with it what you want. 10,000 bucks is your commission. Uh, now again, that's on a hundred thousand dollar RV, uh, but but even a twenty thousand dollar RV still in between a two and three thousand dollar check. They just give it to us. It's awesome. It's well, I remember your uh, your uncle saying the first time, like way back twenty years ago or whatever, mm -hmm. when they first did their first uh, loan through a bank, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden this check arrived. Up. Like he's they, like, they, what's they, it? Like they, we already made our margin. And was like, what is this? <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's that's your that's yours. Do with it what you want cool. We're going to use you a lot more, but, but just, I mean, kind of, well, not to interrupt, no, kind, kind of what, what you're saying. Yeah. It, we, we were like, we saw an opportunity with this. We were like, no, wait a minute. We're, I mean, we're good. We just built a building. We have everything we need. Let's, let's sell these even cheaper and really upset some competition. And that's, and that's exactly what happened. And that's why um, we got to where we are, honestly, is doing everything different. You still don't have paved driveways. Well, but uh, marble, but, uh, sure. But <laughs> bath, I mean, do you need that stuff to sell RVs though? Exactly. Right. Like I, I don't want like my really. ego to get the best of me and need to have this huge, like, you know, and, and again, it's, it's, it's some, so I've been to some really nice places in my life. I, I typically, th those are the places where I'm standing around for an hour at wondering when the heck someone's going to come help me. <laughs> right. I yeah. mean, the, seriously, like so it's not the, the bigger the franchise, the less of a mom and pop, uh, you know, entity that it is. In my opinion, less service. Seriously, no, seriously. Yeah. like it's, it's, it's no more personal interest anymore. I got your money. What do I need you yeah. for? And well, then, it's kind then, of like uh, shows because I always thought, man, this is the time. This is February. I should be at the show. I get my best deals at the show. show. Yeah. And uh, yeah, don't mind the horses going over. <laughs> um, the uh, but yeah, I didn't understand. I remember uh, making a call uh, to the owners and saying. Like, why are you guys at? I'm at the Chicago Boat and RV show. Like, why are you guys here? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, Tim, let me tell you. Yeah. And then he started going through, like, oh, well, Tim, it cost us, you know, you think about one booth, that's what, $2,500 for 10 by 10. Well, trailer's 30 feet, so that's three times that. And then you'd say, well, we would probably want at least 10 trailers there to make a showing. So multiply that times 10. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, you have the union people that have to put it into position. Then you've got, all the staff, staff and the hotels and the meals and the props cleaning, cleaning and then all the shipping there and driving it back and i mean well, transportation that's, fees that's where you like, see all of the hidden fees that's but like hundreds it, of thousands just to be at the show you know what they do they they do a hundred dollar deposit at the show yeah so to super, get easy more get. super easy here's a hundred bucks here's your commitment you don't really even really see the paperwork to get to them to the dealership Oh, so and now, okay, right. and now you yeah, present just, all of these fees. No, it's a, just go, you're in and out go, as go. soon as you can. Go, 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 go. Get as many of them in there. Most of them do end up canceling once that happens. I mean, they're only out a hundred bucks. I mean, it, but most of them do end up canceling once things start to get set in stone or once they start to see these things in writing. Um, but it's exact. I mean, exactly what you're, what we're going over today. That's that's again. That's the the place for the RV show is a very. It's a genius scam i guess is what i'm trying to say is you're they, they'll sell a hundred of the same trailer in one day and i mean literally they've got to recoup that two hundred thousand dollar investment or whatever I mean, that's the fee so it's not gonna be the yeah that's, that's the fees that's the once oh, you go okay, to the yeah. dealership to pick up i remember him saying that's like that's that, the fees. Yeah. they brought all the dealers got together and say hey what's our fees mm -hmm. you know to make sure we cover i may have created names for it. i forget what they call them like for show fees and stuff but it yeah. basically covers that fee yep. to get that money back basically okay. no it's all calculated every okay. a, dealer, a dealership you. has a, a place to sell from as it is why would they take their product somewhere else and sell cheaper does that sir any anybody could could use common sense and say that's a that's not that's not a a, a, a real thing right but yeah, but so no. I, I distracted you from that Fine, that good. amount that so you call it, it's a like a commission that's coming from the bank to you to I, I, it's it's dealers. called it's, what, what's the name of it just like you know terminology in the RV industry it can be called a lot of things you have uh, reserve money kickback money okay uh, but really at the oh, end of the, the day reserve, okay. to to make the most sense of it they are paying me for my time of working with you right they're there i did all their jobs for them but they're still the ones that's going to collect interest from you over the next however many years so um basically 
just, I mean, kind of like what you said, though, we, we don't have a paved parking lot. We don't need marble floors in our bathrooms and our showrooms and stuff like that. Um, all of our kids, they've already grown up. They don't need braces anymore, right? I, I hear a lot of people say that one. Um, but, but we don't need to make every dollar. So this, this check that would normally go into our pocket, being that we're a dealership, we're going to give to you guys, okay? Um, there's a, a fine line. And, and again, I mean, everything that we've done, or, or to be the first to do, everybody always copies it, right? <laughs> I guess that's a compliment. It know, is. Like a, no, it is. It, but it's also like Matt's at a barbecue where you go, come on, get out of here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of annoying, you know, like there, there's a guy, um, he calls himself RV Wholesalers One. RV Wholesalers and, and every time I hear that, I'm just like, man, real original. How, I bet it took you a long time to come up with that. Gosh darn it. Anyway, so they, you know, but but I've never seen anyone offer the full amount of the reserve money, right? And they say, if you finance with me, I'll give you $1,000. Well, that sounds appealing, but they don't explain why, what the contingencies are, what any stipulations are. They just say, if you finance with me, I'll give you $1,000. I explain this to every one of my customers where I say, here's why I'm getting this money. Here's why it's so much. Here's why I want to give it to you. Right. So, um, and that, and that's what we do. Um, other dealerships while you're reading through these comments here, other dealerships, they typically will, they're, they're going to send your, your credit to every single bank that they work with. Okay. Because they're trying to see which bank is going to give them the most amount of money for your business. Oh, uh, so it's not really shopping to get you the best rate. No, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, they, you are not supposed to, as a customer, you are not supposed to know about this money. Are you allowed to say that? I mean, it is recorded. As long as people on uh, Bank of America aren't watching, I suppose, but it is what it is. I mean, they, again, this is my money. I can do with it whatever the heck I want. Yeah. It's, it, it's supposed to go in my pocket. Right. That's what they, they gave it to me. That, and with their right. intentions is, is they want to make it my, worth my time. I want to give it to you guys. Because we, again, like, I mean, just, just like I said, about 20 years ago when we got that first check, what the heck is this? We are, we're, I, do we keep it? Is this our, is this an accident? Like we, so we saw that opportunity. We want to give it to the customers. Now we can save even more thousands of dollars because I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, and I'm not even really robbing it. They're just they're just giving to, with wide open arms. And I've only I've only had one customer that ever said, um, well, I, I guess I'm saying this a little bit too early, but there's 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 ways that my cash buyers can take advantage. Yeah, of that's a good question because. I know there's a lot of people like they've been saving. Uh, yes. this has been a dream to go see the. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you call the presidents up on the hill? <laughs> the, uh, everything from Crazy Horse to the Mount Rushmore to yeah. and and so they've got the cash, mm -hmm. uh, they sold a house, whatever. And uh, so I know that is a question. It's like, so yeah. what what can they do and kind of how to and, and like work the work? the mentality of a cash buyer. And I'm just being honest because like I I hold on to all my cash. Like my my mattress is lumpy. I don't trust it in a bank. Right? I just don't. I'm, I'm I'm one of those guys. You know, you what just told them I'm one like, of those guys. <laughs> if you can if you can dig uh, past you the bodies, you at least. yeah. If you can dig past the bodies, you're gonna find even more. But I I don't I don't want to, I don't trust banks. Right. So but having all that cash, guys, I'm gonna be like. Well, I don't want to spend the cash. I still, I want to go out and get a loan. I want my credit to be as perfect as it can because I, I, I want to be able to afford things that I may not be able to buy for or or want to give my cash away so easily, right? But again, I still want the best deal on everything that I buy. When you buy something, you that's what you look for is the best deal, right? So um, honestly, what I do is I, I sometimes I'll act like I'm a cash buyer to get the best deal. And I know a lot of my customers do too. But at the end of the day, I always show up with a certified check from my credit union, right? And uh, and Candace, you asked about your credit union. I'm gonna get to that in just one second um, once I finish up the cash buyer thing. <clears throat> So, so with, with RV loans, the only contingency is to keep the loan open for one calendar year, 12 payments, right? So let's say that you, as a cash buyer, you want, you're begging me to give you cash because you want the best deal and you think that's how you're going to get the best deal. Well, again, we're, we're different. I'm going to give you, let's say that you financed a $20,000 trailer. And in a perfect world, your monthly payment is $200, right? Now I'm, I'm going to put a pen in that. Say, say that, um, the cash buyer, again, he wants the best deal, but he's willing to play this, this game that I'm describing to you. So I'm going to say, listen, Mr. or Mrs. Cash buyer, you take the loan for 12 months, right? I, I'm going to, as a dealership, I'm going to set it up on, let's just say a 10 year term, right? Because just like a mortgage, the higher, the longer you borrow, the better rate you get. So let's say I set it up on a 10 year term, $20,000, perfect world. Your monthly payment is $200 and your interest rate is, let's just say an even five, just to make it make, you know, e easy to everyone to comprehend. 
So you only have to make 12 of those $200 payments. So quick math, 12 times 200 is $2,400. If you subtract that from the 20,000 that you originally borrowed, it'll leave you with $17,600. So on that very first payment, what my cash buyers do is they put down $17,600. Okay, so what, there's only a little it, bit of... Exactly, so now that 5% interest rate is based off of your $2,400 instead of your $20,000. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so how much does that interest for those 11 months would, end up working without down? Without having... It keeps going down, 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 it, down. It, it would keep going down, but without having a calculator, couldn't tell you, but it would be less than $300. Wow. I promise you that. So and $300. I just, I just saved you 2000 right? Again, in, in a perfect world... So I'm world, giving you 300 Mr. Bank. Yeah. You're giving me... Uh, through RB wholesalers again, call it call it two. So you still save seventeen hundred bucks wow. as a cash buyer. Yeah, with that being my goal, yeah, it took a little bit of time, but I just I just played the game and I won. That's a pretty accomplishing feeling, if I'm being honest with you. And, and the bank's it, happy. I mean, because it was they their contract. Money. They've got they got their money year. back. Um, well, I've, I've only that's what I was going to tell you. I've only had one customer ever be upset with me. <laughs> they felt bad. They, they were like, "Why would they be okay with this? Why would Bank of America like let you do this?" Or and again, I'm I'm just picking on Bank of America and U.S. Bank because they have the best rates, so we use them a lot. So oh, that's okay. why I'm pulling their names out of out of the sky here. But they're like, "Why would they be okay with this?" And I said, "Sir." <sighs> Why would you feel bad for someone who makes millions of dollars a day? Do you think they're really going to be upset with $1,700 lost in a whole year? And again, I'm the only dealership to my knowledge telling their customers about this. So do you really think it's that popular that it's caught on? No, I don't expect it to. But why? let's at least play the game to our advantage while everyone else is getting screwed and getting rich off of people that are getting screwed, yeah. right? I mean, so, so anyway, we, that's just, I, I want to know what's, I, I want to tell people what's going on behind the curtain because I know you're not going to hear from other people because that, <laughs> yeah, that big true. check that they're getting from the banks, that's a lot, a, good of, a lot of motivation not to tell you about it, right? So, um, yeah. but Candice, really quick, your your credit union is the way, so I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what oh, I yeah. did, all right? I've, I've bought in two RVs through this location. My dad owns the place, so clearly this is the best, best place for me to get an <laughs> RV. Um, of both deals that I did, the uh, the first one, it was just a little utility trailer. I paid cash for that, so I'm not going to talk about that one. But the the, the second one, it was it was a it was forty six thousand dollars, and that was a lot of money to me. And I wanted I wanted the best everything, the best interest rate, the best payment. I wanted everything that I could do to make it affordable and not really eating at me that it's sitting in my driveway and I'm not camping in it while I'm spending all this money on it. Right. So um, what I did was I went through U.S. Bank. They gave me four thousand dollars in reserve money. Okay, now I've given every single car, boat, uh, my motorcycles, uh, mortgage, every single thing to Honda Federal Credit Union. Okay, because no one else in the whole world is going to offer me a two point four percent interest rate on a on a seven or on a six or seven year term for a car. No, no one else has has even come close to giving that to me. Okay, being in my my standpoint, my you know. Um, so with that being said. I played the game. I, I took the loan through U.S. Bank. They gave they saved me four thousand dollars, and I was set up on a five point nine percent interest rate. Okay, now I was able to borrow for twelve years, so my monthly payment was very manageable. It was about three hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, now I me personally, I've always paid more, so I put five hundred dollars on every single payment that I made for that year. It's just it's just who I I like to just know a little bit more is going to the principal, right? But after that year was up, I went to my federal credit union, Honda, okay? They pretty much own, like if you don't work here or Airstream, you work at Honda. It's a small area, but that's the the, the larger jobs or careers basically. Anyway, um, I took my loan through them. So I got it refinanced on that 12th month, which was my contingency through US Bank. And they gave me a 2.9% interest rate. Now here's the thing though, they only let me borrow six years on it. And that's where a lot of credit unions get you is they will they will not let you borrow what a recreational loan or a boat should be borrowed on. Um, and so, but, and again, in my case, it was good because I was used to making a $500 payment already. So since they gave me the same or close to the same payment, but at a 2.9% interest rate, it made sense to do the job. But of all the business I've ever given them, not one time, Candace, have they ever said, hey, Josh, here's a check. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah. But they get, I, I, I remember when I gave them my mortgage, I got a letter in the mail saying that some bank in Cincinnati owned the deed to my house. I'm like, what? I never called them. Well, yeah, Honda sold it. sold it to this bank in Cincinnati. I bet Honda got 
thirty thousand dollars minimum off of off of that. Just just type, just doing a couple things on their keyboard. I bet they got thirty thousand dollars minimum from from my business that I didn't get anything of. But I guarantee that they got rich off of me. So again, I um, it's all about playing the game. And just like what I said, you keep it open for twelve months, you save all this money, and then you go get your 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 better interest rate with somebody else. That's that's just that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, before we get into service stuff, yes, of uh, Karen asked, what's the major difference between financing for full timing versus recreation use? You should probably help her out with the full timing thing. So yes, I, and this is, this is my experience and, and, uh, Jamie, uh, I, you know, honesty is incredible. I appreciate that. I, I try not to lie. I talk to a lot of people and, uh, I, I'll tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. Uh, I'm probably going to not remember most of this. So if I lie, then I got to remember that lie. I can't do that. So I'm just going to tell you, but it, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people are offended by me telling the truth. So it's a double edged sword, but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but Karen, your, your differences between financing full time and recreational here is my experience with that. Any bank that finds out that you are living in this RV will not loan to you. I know there are some banks out there. I just know that they are, re I mean, I, I don't want to say ridiculous. Yeah, I don't want to say ridiculous because truthfully, we're not set up with them. So I don't know, but I have heard that they are a little bit more on the outrageous side. Okay. It's because, I mean, an R, a recreational vehicle, right? Recreational, that word literally means it's not, it's not permanent. It's not full time. It's just, it's an, it's a hobby. It's something that will be done on occasion. So when you're living in an RV, which literally, I mean, people do this, it's fine. I don't, I don't care what you do. And I tell my customers, listen, if you're living in it, that's fine. I just need it to be our secret because my banks don't want to know that you are. Matter of fact, if, if like, again, US Bank or Bank of America finds out that you're living in it, they can cancel the loan. They could repossess the RV. Here's the thing. An RV is hard to find. Okay, so if they find out that you're living in it and you stop paying your bills or, or just the idea of that you could stop paying your bills and just go put this thing in a wood somewhere and they never find it, that does not make the bank sleep well at night, right? So they, my banks that we're set up with, they do not want you to know that you're living in it. They won't allow it. Again, I say that that's our secret. I do know that there are banks out there that do finance for full timing. I just, we're not set up with them because of the rates being ridiculous. Um, I mean, there, there's just not much, uh, to, it, it, it might be uh, peace of mind for you guys, but really it's just easier to keep it a secret because I'm sure it's going to be, you know, um, even if it is full time, we could still say it's a part time thing. I, 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 have, yeah. I have people staying in their homes uh, right next to the houses that they're building because it's going to take a while yeah. and they need a place to stay. Um, I, I just my, I have a customer here picking up a sandpiper today that's doing exactly that. Okay. The <laughs> banks did not want to loan him anything. They asked for a cell phone bill, a utility bill. I mean, this guy is living with his uh, his wife's parents and we have to try to prove all these things because, again, once they find out you're living in it, Nope, they're not going to let you borrow it. So again, that's just our banks. I know there's some out there. Honestly, though, it'll save you a lot of money if you're willing to just keep a secret and not tell them that you're living in it, if I'm being honest with you. But hey, you guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to keep rolling here. If you don't mind staying around, I've, I'm going to sweeten the pot a little bit at the very end because um, we want to talk about service real quick and um, orgies just briefly. Um, but at the very end, I have a special uh, deal for a few of you, um, I think that I just got approved from cool. uh, higher ups. Cool. So um, yeah, real quick, uh, last uh, big service uh, question, number five, not checking out service and wait times. Um, let's touch on this real briefly. The The question that came up in the chat, um, ooh, Dave Rogers asked, what do customers do for warranty work if they buy RV at RVW and live in New York? So mm -hmm. people are asking a lot about RVW. So. Uh, we didn't want it to be all about RVW, but um, since you guys are asking, well, it's I wanted uh, it's it's I mean that. And, and, and yeah, like you're selling RVs like I mean Alaska. Mm -hmm. Have you ever you sold some in Hawaii, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, so we we had a guy he shipped six Wildwoods to to, to <laughs> Hawaii. Funny. It was because they were reconstructing mm -hmm. this this. Uh, oh, okay. I, I guess you'd call it a village. That's what he referred to it as. But they were yeah. reconstructing things, so he sent six Wildwoods over there. And so, so you're dealing with people there. all over the nation yeah. that. Um, you're not right next door to with a big service yeah. center like you have in Ohio. Exactly. Uh, so how do, I think that's Dave's question. Like, how do you take care of those people? 
And, and yeah, I mean, uh, so, so, and, and to everyone that's still with us again, appreciate you just sticking around. Um, I'd love to see more questions and stuff, try to hit as much as we can here. And then, um, got my information. If anything else, um, email me, text me, whatever, but, um, it's, it, it is very important. I mean, I don't, I don't like to use this as our spotlight, but, but it is important to know because again, like we, I, whether you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you did, but we were the first dealership on the internet. Yeah. That's a how, crazy how's thing. How, 20, 26, 20, 25, 26 years. Okay. And that's a crazy thing to even think about, but we were the first to do a lot of things, the virtual RV tour, right? Oh yeah. The show. We were literally the first to do yeah, that. Yeah. Actually it was next a, Wednesday. That's a good point. Uh, virtual RV show.com. We'll put that in the uh, chat here, yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, but yeah, check that out next Wednesday all day. Uh, Josh and the other folks are going to be walking through RVs that are actually available for sale that day. They're going to have this huge sale event. So it's kind of like a, a virtual version of going to a show right. where we don't have to pay all those fees that we were just talking about. Well, and, nice. and like a lot of people, they'll miss the point. And I, I didn't mean, I guess, good, good, um, good, good shout out there. I, I forgot it was next weekend. So thank you. Um, but, Wednesday, uh, yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. But um, it's, it's not to, like, a lot of people miss the point. They're like, well, I'm not going to buy anything sight unseen. Well, no, but you also can't really leave your house to look at a whole bunch of RVs, yeah. like depending on where you are. So it's fun. We have a lot of fun doing it. We appreciate people that want to uh, tune in and ask questions and stuff. Too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> cool. it's just, it's fun for us. It makes a day go by quick. And we do like, I think last time we sold 83 trailers. Yeah. Literally like it, it, it wasn't even expected. We just had a great time doing it. But anyway, like I don't like to use these webinars as our spotlight just to try to tell people like, you know, who, who we are and what we do. But it, it, with service, though, it is important because we are we were the first to do what I'm about to explain, and we're still the only ones. And with that, the reason I make that a point is everybody else has copied everything else that we've done except service. And that blows my mind. It really does because they see how successful it's made us. I mean, when you put people before profit, that profit takes care of itself times two. It, it really does. When, when, it's, when it's out of your mind and all this, I mean, seriously – all of these people, when they see that they just that you have the ability to take care of somebody, that you that you stuck through your word and and, and you made you made that promise a reality if they ever needed it, they won't let their friends buy from anybody else. Mm -hmm. They won't let their family buy from anybody else. All uh, everyone will know my name if I if I earn it, right? And I'm not saying that's always the easiest task, but it, again, not not I'm not trying to make this our spotlight, but to give you the idea or the understanding, I guess, of of what real services, real customer service, and why people don't do it, I guess, or, or, or why, I don't know. Again, that's that's still kind of a mystery of why uh, you can copy everything we've done to get us who we are, or to get us to where we are, but not copy what makes us who right. it's we the are. secret sauce that nobody But it's not, happening. right? But it's, it's literally what we have. <laughs> it's not. It's, yeah, but anyway, guys, with service, just real quick, um, I, and especially... Um, which um, let's what was that gentleman's name? Dave. So Dave, we have a nationwide service network. All right, and I guess to explain, Tim, how much time do we have? Oh, we're past our time, so we're gonna roll. Okay. Uh, well, so just real quick, and there's other videos out there, guys. If anyone has to take off early, I, we we get it. Sorry for for going over here, but also appreciate um, a, about ninety five percent of you staying. That's awesome. We we really enjoy that. But um, to to understand what we do, you have to understand why we do it. So the manufacturer, they recommend that a customer buys locally from their local dealership, okay? Why they uh, recommend that is because of the service that you will find after the sale, okay? So you now what I mean by that is first and foremost, there is no contractual obligation in the RV industry. You know what that means? Yeah. It means it means it's not like that, the car industry where they have to fix your perfect uh, the, your type yes. of Exactly. Model exactly. Right. Well, so and, and ex exactly right. It's it's a lot of people think it's like the car industry because, hey, I bought a Ford from Texas and I live in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Every Ford dealership in Oklahoma, they don't have the right to refuse you, mostly because car parts are everywhere. Every place has an O'Reilly's, has an AutoZone, has, an, has a Napa. Right. Where do RV parts come from? Indiana, right? Very, and then the they, 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 they come from overseas to this place and then they get distributed. It takes forever. An RV dealership literally has the right to refuse to work on your RV. And that's a crazy thought to me, right? So, but, and, and it's funny because, you know, again, I just said all that. 
if you are currently, I, I, I challenge anybody again, who's still watching that you're currently working with your local dealership on prices or RVs or something, ask them how they're going to take care of you after the sale. If, if you live out of state or even a couple hours away, ask how they're going to take care of you after the sale. They're going to like when I go camping, like I don't go camping near my hometown. Like I'm like three states away if I can. That's probably where it's going to happen. You're going to, yeah, you're going to spend $25,000 on an RV and not leave your driveway. Right. Right. Stay like that's whole okay. Time. Yes. You're, <laughs> right. you're trapped. Most people are going across state lines. I just sold a motor home to a gentleman. They, uh, and this is an awesome story. They had a seven year honeymoon that they traveled the country. Hey, That's what he said. They met on, Christian, nice. they met on Christian mingle and literally uh, uh, two months after the gentleman retired, they met on online and they took a, uh, what ended up being a seven year anniversary <laughs> across the country. Wow. That's I, I, I hear more, not that specific story, but I hear more of people traveling. I mean, this is an RV, it's a home on wheels or it's better than a hotel. You're not staying in your own backyard. So, and that's also when the RV is going to break is when you're using it in across state lines and when you don't have your local guy near you. So but say, say, um, we're in Ohio, I take it out three states away in Nebraska, uh, air conditioner starts leaking, whatever, mm -hmm. like, what do I do? And like, how would you take care of me then in that situation? So again, and, and it, there's, there, there's a fine line, all right? Because we, we are the only ones that are, this, this is what I call my proprietary offering. I watch a lot of shark tank. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is our proprietary offering. This is literally the one thing that we, that we do that we've done for years that I've not seen anybody copy yet. And again, this, it blows my mind, but I, I think after I'm all done explaining, you'll kind of understand why that is. But so, so Tim, if you guys, and, and I'm going to tell you an actual story real quick, two, okay. two of them. Um, I had a guy in the Fort wilderness lodge, down in Florida? Resort in Florida. Oh yeah, I love that. You know how long it takes to get a reservation there? No, but I know how much it costs for a pack of s'mores and a stick. It's like thirty five dollars. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, how long? <laughs> they had been waiting since the beginning of two thousand nineteen. Jeez, like it was a year over and nine now. months to get into this place. And and I'm not joking with you. This was one of the only. This is one of the first five trips that they have been able to make out of state. They're from Tennessee. Okay. It's one of the first trips that they're able to make out of state. They do a lot of local stuff, KOA, stuff like that. But they get down there, and their poor air conditioner was not keeping up in the heat. And if you think that a man and a woman are going to be able to sleep comfortably with two screaming kids and 100-degree humidity while you are trying to enjoy yourself, that's the last. that piece is the last thing you will know on that camping trip. We were able to, Florida is a big place. So I get, I mean, it's a good and a bad example, but Florida is a big place. We have a lot of, of places established. Um, again, first and foremost, I am not going to send you to your local dealership. Okay. If, and, and, and I will explain why, but we will use a mom and pop shop or a, or an independent service center or, or some sort of, or especially like a, some, yes, HVAC specialist, okay, yes, uh, a, 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 a plumbing guy, you know, you know, specialist, uh, d depending on, and, and, and this is just what I tell people to describe it, I guess, is when you have an issue, you call us, you tell us where you are and what the issue is. Those two things determine who I can get to you, who I can get you to, who's coming out there, all of those things. But, um, and, and, and again, I, I just want to back up real quick where, where again, there, there's no contractual obligation. So, um, since this gentleman bought it from me, I mean, I was able to, to, to take the tools that we have in place and apply them towards the situation and be able to take care of him. I was able to send a guy out there to his RV, hopped on the roof, was able to take the air conditioner off and an air conditioner. It's kind of like a transmission you don't tear apart a transmission anymore and fix it yeah. and put it back together. You just get a whole new transmission and you send yours back for a core. That's, that's what it is. Same thing. Air conditioner was swapped out within an hour and these guys were back to, I don't even know if they were at the camper during this transition, but I know it was done. I know it was taken care of. Now here's the thing. The only thing he was subject to was a service call. It was seventy five dollars for this, for this guy, gentleman to travel from his location to my customers, 75 bucks. So the customer had to pay 75 bucks. Since he was still under warranty, since it was still in the first year, we covered the air conditioner, the labor, and all of the parts and accessories that needed to do. Now, that again, I don't want to get too far off topic because now I'm talking about my RVW bill pay. I, again, I'm not trying to make this our spotlight, but, w but the reason I'm explaining this is this is a good example of how we were able to take care of a gentleman who was in the situation, 
who needed us and, and who was depending on us. And yeah, I mean, again, he was, he was screaming. I mean, this was not a pleasant interaction. He was screaming at us because his year old camper was broken yeah, and he's in Florida on right. his uh, reservation that he made um, almost a year ago. This is not typically a good experience when these things happen, but long story short, it is what it is. Um, RVW bill pay. That's just where we will pay the bill while you're under manufactured warranty. We do this because we will get our money back like that. They, they know, RV wholesalers. They have to keep RV wholesalers happy. They don't know Tim Richardson, mm -hmm. right? I mean, just because you bought the yeah, camper so doesn't I submit mean the that, bill and then like it's lost and never, never. And like that's, that's the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll say about, about the difference, right? So, and again, um, so you have this whole nationwide network of these vetted people that you were just talking about from all different types of service. We're, we're sitting just under 3000 wow. places of business. Uh, I would say less than 10% of that list consists of a dealership. And if it does have a dealership on it, we've worked with them in the past. There's there again, this, the, the goal of this webinar was not to say that everybody in the industry is a terrible, um, deceitful person. There's still some really good people that we share the space with. Um, but there are plenty of people that are really just out to make as much money as possible and then, and, and leave you high and dry afterwards. Um, ultimately, that's just what we're trying to accomplish here. So, so again, ask your local dealer how they're going to take care of you after the sale. They're going to tell you two things, and when they do, run. First and foremost, they're going to say, "Well, we'll you know, uh, I think it was uh, James, uh, no, David. I'm sorry, uh, David. Dave, if you buy from your local dealer and you're my customer, and well, not my customer in this case, but again, you buy from your local guy in New York and you're traveling to Florida, he is going to tell you two things. One, you can take it to any Forest River or whatever brand and manufacturer RV that you have that you bought from him. You can take it to any one of those dealers wherever you are and they will work on it. Or you can wait until you come back to me and you can, and you can schedule it in in my shop and I'll get you right in. Here's the problem with both of those things. While you are traveling, okay, so if the gentleman in Florida, the this, this situation I just described, had he had bought it from someone else, he's the one making the calls trying to find someone to travel to him to get it taken care of which I'm just going to be honest with you. I know a lot of places in Florida, not too many dealerships offer mobile service because they have so many service bays. It makes no sense to offer mobile when they could get you in. I'm not saying any quicker, right, but, but it's, it's just cheaper for them. It's cheaper for them, of yeah. course. So why would they do that? Um, but he, that, that customer, if he would have bought it from someone else, he would have been at the mercy of a really ridiculous service call or to, cancel everything he had just done because again you're not you're not staying in an rv at, with 100 degree heat not with two kids and a wife I, I promise you that no matter who you are you're gonna go try and find a hotel or you're gonna pack up and go home seriously like and, and you just that was all all for nothing okay at the very least even if you do find a dealership that could get you in the next day in a perfect world you still have to pay for the air conditioner you still have to pay for the labor. You still have to pay for the parts. You are so still out coming pocket, out of pocket. You pay, okay, and then, you're still coming, and then you fight for the okay. manufacturer for your reimbursement, right? Because right. again, it, sh it as long as it's under manufacturer warranty and it should be covered, that's great. But it doesn't mean that they're just gonna gonna roll over. And and even if we're talking about a six week process just to get your money back, you're in line with two hundred to three hundred other upset customers that are fighting for their money back too, right? Well, that's the thing. I've looked at a lot of dealerships um, when I've been driving by and, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth and looking at wait times. And it's like 13 weeks would be nice on a lot of these. The national average was nine weeks. Nine weeks. That means that some people had their RVs on a dealer's lot getting service for six to nine months. That also means some people were there for two to three weeks. doesn't yeah. matter. And that was, that was last year before all of this stuff happens. To yeah. Get, Air conditioners, parts at it's all. Yeah, it's craziest that it's ever been. It's the most difficult that it's ever been. Um, to to rely on somebody that's just going to throw you to the wolves is a very delicate place. Um, I seen somebody asking, um, if I don't buy from you, can I still ask you for any problems local places to go? So, I mean, uh, Joan, this is something that we really try to keep exclusive to our customers. Um, but I will tell you a real quick story because this is, again, it kind of shows you who, who we are. Um, so I, I had a guy from Colorado. He bought a Rockwood roof from me. His brother decided to buy a shamrock from his local dealer uh, before his brother found out about me. Well, they were traveling together out to Nevada and his brother had hit a pothole. This is, this is not my customer that I'm referring to. He hit a pothole so bad that the axle, when it bent the trailer while it was going down the road was going up and down because the axle was so bent. And they're two states away from being home 
and they don't know what to do. So my customer calls me. We were able to fly fly an axle out to Nevada to this local uh, dealership. I, I'm not going to tell you the name because I despise them, but they were <laughs> they were at our – there's the only place within a 100-mile radius that we could take this thing to while it was hopping up and down the road. We were able to fly an axle out there. I mean, the gentleman paid for everything. We couldn't, we didn't do anything, but yes, we were able to find him a place. We we're able to to do those things. Um, I promise, when he's ready to upgrade, he's not going to go back to the local guy who left him stranded. That says, "Yeah, bring it back to us. We'll fix you." <laughs> hey, I'm in Nevada, you you jack wagon. I can't even drive a mile an hour. What are you talking about? Bring it back to Colorado? Why? That's impossible, right? So, um, so, 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 Joan. With that being said, I, I, I don't know why you would buy locally. People, people need the things that we offer, um, and I, I would at least ask for the opportunity, right? But um, ultimately, whatever, uh, whatever the situation is, and maybe it's a trade that we don't sell for whatever reason. I, I get it, and again, we, I can't sell them all, right? But um, I would at least make sure that whatever it is you're looking for, or, or maybe you're just buying local for convenience. Again, I have no idea, but I would just make sure that you know, you can receive even a fraction of the things I just mentioned, even, I mean, you don't want to be at the mercy of, of people that don't really care about you after the sale is all, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, so we're the last, uh, someone asked what was number four, four was one uh, that we blew through, but that was the big finance secret. So not asking for it, you know, not knowing <laughs> yeah. what the big finance secret was. So you guys know what that is now. We kind of at number uh, five, we just talked about service times, and then uh, I always uh, like to throw in a number six, but we don't have time. Uh, it's about warranty, extended service contracts. You know, are they, are they important or not? Um, when you're talking about bouncing the trailer down the road, it, it is important. On uh, even though I didn't think it was as a kid, but uh, next Tuesday, if you can join us next wow. Tuesday, same time, one thirty. I'm going to bring in Vaughn, uh, who's been helping a lot of people, even with used RVs, get into the service contract. And so he, he's going to talk all the details on service contracts. So we're going to devote a whole uh, time just to service contracts. So I uh, wish we had more time to dig into that. But as we wrap up, I wanted to tell you um, uh, I'm able to give anybody that emails you, if you're okay with this, uh, Jay Durnell at RV Wholesalers, anybody that emails you and puts the word, uh, 500 in there. Um, the first two people that do that uh, in the subject, uh, we'll be able to give them if they end up purchasing uh, here, you know, in this short little window here, sure. um, we'll give them a $500 credit towards their uh, delivery. Okay. So anywhere in the United States, I know you deliver to people's backyards yeah. or storage facility, whatever. That's all. Uh, that's, that's actually so get, a yeah. really good idea. Well, because, so. I mean, the the prices right now people are charging to ship things is outrageous. So that's a very thoughtful gesture. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. So, so thanks for so uh, hanging guys, out with us. Yeah. All so put five hundred in the subject or in in the email to Jay Darnell at rvwholesalers.com. and uh, the first two people to do that, uh, if they end up buying here in the next day or so, yeah, uh, cool. they can you can hook them up with. Really great pricing. So. Very cool. And uh, Jeff, Big B, give me a call. Let's let's compare numbers, okay? Uh, I mean, there's no way a guy in Phoenix, Arizona, is gonna gonna come close to what what we have to offer. I mean, just just give us a call if you want to compare stuff before you sign. That way, you know you're making a decision. But I just I just got a call from a guy in Arizona two weeks ago. He thought I was a scam because I was saving him over thirty thousand. So I I promise that we'll be able to to help you out, okay? Um, and Jack, um, we're in uh, RV Wholesalers is located just uh, northwest of Columbus, Ohio, about 45 minutes or so in Lakeview. So, yep. uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll send you a recording of this in about two hours. You'll get that in your email and uh, appreciate you guys taking time to hang out with us. And man, Josh, thanks for uh, yeah, bringing all this, uh, these great nuggets of inside information and uh, it's been good. So. It's fun, guys. Appreciate all you sticking around for all this time. And uh, if you got yeah. anything else, I'm like I said, email and phone number is open. We can kind of pick up where we left off if uh, if I missed anybody. So we'll leave our chat open for a couple more minutes. So uh, I'd love to hear like your dream of what you plan to use your RV for. If you got uh, whether it's yeah, what kind of you know dream trip you have planned or how you want to use it. It's always fun for us. So we'll take a look at those here in the next minutes now that we sign off, but uh, we'll keep that chat open and uh, we'll be uh, look forward to talking to you. So thanks. Take care. See you guys.